Good afternoon, book lovers of the internet. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe because for every subscriber, I get a new subscriber and I also read a page from a book of my choice. I hope all of you are doing well. Personally, I am feeling rather under the weather, but I'm sure it will be fine in just a couple of days. In this video, I am going to be reviewing volume 66 of Naruto by Masashi Kishimoto. Um, I'm sure you can tell that I am feeling rather under the weather by the way I am speaking. Do let me know if it is noticeable or not in the comment section, but Naruto volume 66 has about 180 pages and I rated it 4 out of 5 stars. So I have the omnibus as you can see. This one consists of volume 64, 65 and 66, but I reviewed them individually in order to help me with my Goodreads goal. So there were many surprises in this one, and there are going to be quite a lot of spoilers ahead, so if you haven't read this one yet, or if you're in the process of watching or reading Naruto, you have three seconds to click away. Okay, so several advances caught me by surprise, although I'm glad that Kishimoto is finally wrapping this up. Since all the cards are on the table, we've had a fair share of action scenes, and the characters are mostly developed well. Save for Sakura, probably. I don't think she is, personally, but feel free to disagree with me in the comment section. So Kishimoto himself mentioned how he never thought that this series would last this long to begin with, but several years down the line he went ahead and made Boruto, yet another generation of Naruto characters people are meant to relate to and love. So this was a good volume overall, I now have six volumes to go, and I can't believe it, uh, two omnibuses in order to finish the entire series, and it's pretty crazy that it's drawing to a close because it's been several years since I started reading the series. So, I mean, the one thing I can really complain about is Sakura catching up with the rest of Team 7. I, I feel as though that part was too abrupt and I still don't much believe that she's all that powerful. She has a lot of healing factors, healing abilities, which she learned under the rule of Tsunade. But other than that, I don't think she's particularly impressive. Tsunade is the fifth Hokage, by the way, of uh, Konoha Gakure. So, the Edo Tensei, which is kind of like a spell, right, which can raise people from the dead, it's extremely cool and allowed for Naruto and his dad, uh, Minato Namikaze, to be reunited. And Obito went ahead and decided to become the Jinshuriki of the Ten-Tailed Beast. Basically, I mean, these were several things which caught me by surprise, even though there are several characters who can basically calculate what will happen next. Shikamaru is one of them, for example, a brilliant character who can play war as though it's a chess game. Um, some things still caught me by surprise, even though we were forewarned that they would happen. So... Yeah, I'm not quite sure how, but Orochimaru is suddenly a good guy, and I'm pretty sure that Sai is dead. Sai is a character who was introduced to Team 7 in order to replace Sasuke, because Sasuke um, just decided to go rampant and flee his village and return as a villain under the rule of Orochimaru, but I mean, it's still shady that he is back, and... Honestly, Sasuke and Sakura, they, they are making fun of Naruto by both stating that they wish to become the Hokage. I mean, they both know that Naruto's dream since the very beginning has been to become the Hokage, and yet they are making fun of this dream as though it's something that anybody can accomplish. I don't think that's cool, even though that is not the way it necessarily comes across, but especially after what Naruto does for everybody in Konoha Gakure, and for all his friends, I don't think he should be treated in such a way. I mean, this is a dream that he's had for a very long time, and he deserves better, to be honest. I mean, Sasuke's reappearance is extremely shady, to say the least, but it is extremely fun to identify the similarities between this generation and the one which came before. So it's pretty mind-blowing to think about how ahead of his time, 
Kishimoto was to think of a generation which came before and an entire story which unfolded very slowly, while in the meantime we were still in the present um, following Naruto's own story. And he had all this planned ahead before he decided to go ahead and complete the series. And that is why I have so much respect for Masashi Kishimoto. So what makes Naruto so interesting is how Kishimoto allowed both the past and the present to happen at the same time, thanks to the Edo Sensei, despite uh, the Edo Tensei, despite so many deaths which happened during the war, which also killed Naruto's parents and made Naruto who he is today. So yeah, that is basically all I had to say about uh, Naruto Volume 66. I have six to go, and I will be reviewing every single one of them. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know in the comment section. Make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. Check out the rest of my content, because why not? It's absolutely amazing. And I will see you in the next one, hopefully very, very soon. Bye, guys. Thank you.